Welcome everyone. So, our journey in stochastic control so far has been as follows. We started off with stochastic control problems uh, where the state was perfectly known. We then wrote out uh, different classes of policies for these problems. We realized that uh, for such problems Markov policies are optimal uh, and, and the way to find uh, the policies, the optimal policies was uh, by solving Bellman's dynamic programming equation. From there we went to stochastic control problems with imperfect state information and from the imperfect state information uh, there we realized that all of these problems can be formulated as problems on uh, with a perfect state information uh, in one of two ways either you take the information vector as the state but then that leads to a, a blow up of the state space or you you take the belief state as the sta belief state as the state and that keeps the state space uh, the same through uh, at all times and the, uh, then the dynamic programming equation could be written using uh, a combination of the, uh, the perfect state dynamic programming equation and uh, a, a nonlinear state trans, uh, transition associated with the filtering equation for updating the belief state. This then uh, that gave us uh, the theory for imperfect state uh, for stochastic control problems with imperfect state information. From there we went into uh, a special case which was linear quadratic Gaussian problems and there we saw that the optimal controller was linear in the information and that was because of a, because the optimal controller had the structure that it was linear function of the conditional uh, expectation of the state given the information and this conditional uh, expectation of the state given the information in turn was linear in the information because thanks to the property of uh, mean square estimation of Gaussians and then uh, the Kalman filter algorithm that helped us compute this estimate in a, in a recursive manner. But then, then we went into the Witsenhausen problem. Witsenhausen problem taught us that the that all these results uh, are also contingent on, on the information structure that is being assumed. Namely that the, we are assuming that the information structure is classical that means that the information known at previous time steps is, con is also known at future time steps. Once this informa information structure is not classical anymore or is non-classical then in that case the linearity of the optimal controller in, uh, in the LQG problem is not true anymore. In fact the optimal controller is not just non-linear non it is not even known we do not even know what the structure of the optimal controller actually is. So, this uh, all of these uh, problem statements the problem formulations that we have studied so far are uh, in the state space domain in the sense that there is actually a state and the state is uh, the, the state is the key, key uh, sort of description of the system and we, we the, because that is what determines the cost, that is what undergoes transitions and so on. And uh, the issue of information was is either about whether you have information about the state and if you do not have it then which entity, uh, how, how does that information, uh, the imperfect information vary with time. So, that what we will, uh, what we will study now is a different model uh, for stochastic control problems in which we will explicitly involve a thinking of uh, thinking where where we will not think of a, 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 uh, any uh, a controller as a single entity but rather think of every control action as being performed by a, uh, by a different controller okay so you could have in general multiple controllers acting at multiple times and uh, that will then give us a relation between uh, that will then give us a model in which the state of the system is abstracted out. What we only care about then is about what does con what does a particular controller at a particular time know about the about all the events that have happened in the past. Either either this includes the actions that have been taken in the past or the noise that has that is arising from the environment in the past. This, this is going to be our description of the information structure. What this effectively amounts to is 
is, is basically eliminating the state using the state equation. So, one does not really need ex an explicit state equation, really one only thinks of the system as evolving like an input output model. There are actions, actions lead to information, information leads to next actions and, and, this is, and life goes on and this is how the system evolves. Right? So, this, this sort of model which is where you eliminate the state completely and you only think of an, uh, the inputs to the system and information coming from the system is what is often known as uh, uh, the intrinsic model, the intrinsic model of stochastic control uh, uh, because it is essentially describing the system in intrinsically without having to refer to any, any particular uh, subjective choice of what we would like to think of as the state. So, uh, th uh, thanks to this the cost of the system is also described completely in terms of the actions we choose and in terms of any external noise that, that affects the system. So, th this, this then is a new way of, of modeling systems, it is not a new type of system altogether, it is just a new way of modeling systems. But it, it the advantage of this way of modeling is that it makes very clear what, what really is known to every controller at any, uh, at any instant in time. And this allows us to, uh, to really talk, talk of information structures in a much more holistic way without the interference of the state variable coming in between. Right? So, here is therefore the intrinsic model of stochastic control. So, the, the model is as follows. So, we have here we will assume we have n agents. So, this, since this model is, uh, is concerning information structures. It's, we, we, it, there is no loss of generality in just starting from uh, to begin with uh, assuming that we have n agents uh, instead of one agent. Right? So, we will assume we have n agents. These agents receive information, they receive information y i t at time t. Right? So, this agent I, let us say agent I receives information y i t at time t. Now, what we will do is of course, the information that he receives is, uh, uh, is a function of all the events that have happened in the past. So, this includes the actions that other controllers have taken and action that it has itself taken and so on. But, uh, but it is also affected by, uh, by uh, random noise from the environment. So, what we will do is we will accumulate all the sources of noise that occur in the problem. It, this includes the initial state, includes uh, noise by that is present in the system what we call system noise. We will include, we will include also noise that appears in, in measurements what is often called as measurement noise. So, we will consider all of this noise as, as noise from arising from the environment, it is what we call the environmental noise. So, we will gather all of these variables into one variable called psi, this is called the environmental noise. So, the environmental noise comprises of this comprises of all the sources of noise whose distribution we cannot affect. Whose distribution we cannot affect. Right. So. The information that agent i receives y i t is then a function of the actions that have been taken in the problem and the environmental noise. So, y i t is equal to let us say psi i t uh, sorry eta i t of psi and u where what is u? Well, u itself comprises of uh, u1 to ut, where t are your time instants. Capital N is your number of agents. Okay, remember, notice that we have changed the uh, changed the the uh, notation somewhat. 
so earlier n was our time horizon now t has become our time horizon but hopefully that will not lead to any confusion okay now the so u u u is u1 to ut where u1 to ut each of these u sub t's is in fact itself composed comprised of u1 t to u n t where this here is the vector of is the um, collection of actions control actions of the n agents at time t right so so therefore we once we we can we can put all of this in and write out this particular information equation here right so this is the information equation uh, so uh, or this is or you can say not the information equation it is the observation equation this uh, this is the uh, the the information uh, the observation equation of uh, of agent i at time t now uh, notice that there is uh, we need to uh, make this a little bit sharper because this is written with a lot of generality right now uh, here you have y i t which is the information of agent i at time t being written as a function of the environmental noise and all the actions now all the actions u here well this is this is all right to write as uh, you know as as a as a general form but then one has to be careful in this matter because after all u is being produced using using information so remember the the action uit itself is being chosen as a function y i t uh, gamma i t of y i t. Now I call y i t the observation equation here, but we can also think of it as an as an information equation because any previous observations any 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 uh, observation any uh, uh, all the information that you have uh, can be written in this particular form. So, although this he, this is the uh, this is the observation uh, this you can say is the one can think of this as the observation that you have had at time t and then accumulate the previous observations in it or we can simply say that put all the, the entire vector of information entire vector of information that the agent has into one one equation and write this out uh, this particular equation out as an as an uh, as an information equation. Okay, so this is this here is the observation equation can also be considered the information equation. So then if this is the information uh, at time t then the action is being uh, act, action of agent i at time t is being chosen as a function of of this information now the the uh, the 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 uh, subtlety that comes up in because of this uh, uh, these these closed loop equations you have action leading to information information leading uh, action leading to information information leading to next action and so on this the, the subtlety that comes up because of these this this these loop equations is that it can happen that they actually are ill defined in the sense that in order to for you to define uh, uit you need the knowledge of yit but yit itself is being written as a function of uit right so there could be possible there, there could be problems such as the that this equations are not well defined because of the closed loop nature of the problem the other other it could be that these these equations are also lead to a deadlock where neither this is uh, where yit cannot be defined and yit and uit cannot be defined uh, from this set of equations 
So this could, uh, so one has to make sure that that causality is followed when one writes these equations. Okay, so these equations. Let me write this in a different color here. That the eta i t of psi comma u must respect causality. So, uh, what is causality? Well, causality simply means that the causality here would mean that actions u, uh, the actions u j, u j t do not affect so the action u j t that is taken by agent j at time t this does not affect the information y i t y i t dash let us say for all for all i comma j and t dash less than t. So, for so the action taken in the future cannot affect the the uh, the information that is that is present in the past right so act, so in in other words the information is only traveling forwards in time the actions taken in the past affect the information of the future the actions taken in the future should not mathematically be allowed to affect the actions taken in the past this may seem like quibbling but this really is uh, uh, since one is talking of an intrinsic model we have to invoke in it a direction of, of time here and that direction of time unless, uh, unless it is given, uh, uh, given by a specific uh, in, a, in an explicit way is uh, without that time only is an index. So, one has to invoke, uh, invoke some sort of directionality uh, to time and therefore ca causality uh, when one talks of information structures. Right? So, Another assumption here is because I am talking of uh, uh, actions affecting uh, information across time. Another subtlety here which one has to be, uh, be careful about is this is here we are also assuming that there is a, there is a fixed clock. We are assuming that time is, is following a fixed clock which means that the 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 order in which uh, the, the the in which the players act that means the time of action this means that the time of action of players is not affected by actions chosen chosen in the game. So, you can the timing at which players will choose their actions is not affected by the actions that are being chosen in the game. So, such uh, such games uh, or, or uh, is chosen in the in the in the problem. So, such problems are are called sequential problems. So, we are only concerned with sequential problems. If one violates this the, uh, the this assumption in which so the, that means time itself then is not a fixed variable or an index but rather a random variable whose value depends on the action then that leads to a, a completely new level of complication they are what are called non sequential problems so without a fixed clock we lead it leads to non sequential problems Now, assuming therefore that, the, that there is a fixed clock and assuming that we are not violating causality, um, we, we eventually get uh, our, a, a set of loop equations like these uh, where the information the way you have information equation and we have also an, uh, the, the action equation 
all of this well defined. Now what is the purpose then of, of taking this action? Well, the purpose of taking the action is then, so these actions are to be chosen in order to minimize a certain cost. So the goal of the problem is to minimize a cost that depends on minimize the following cost. Let us write this in the following way. So, we minimize the cost L of u1 till un comma psi where u where each of these ui's are chosen as a function of their respective information. So, notice notice that I have a u superscript i here. So, u superscript i is then the vector of all the actions taken by agent i over over time. So, it is u1 ui1 to ui t. actions of agent i over 1 to t all right and now uh, remember that these u's are to be chosen as a function of um, of their respective information so u i u i t is a function of gamma i t of y i t so this therefore has given us a new way of formulating this problem. So we have, we we minimize this over these functions gamma one to gamma n. So our new way of formulating this uh, this problem, uh, a, you can see that if I, if one introduces a state space state space model in between, that means a state variable and so on, those sort of problems can also be reduced to a, to problems of this form. But, but the main advantage here in, in, in formulating uh, the problem in this particular way is that we have gotten rid of the distraction of state. We really do not need to concern ourselves with what the state of the system is because the privileged position that the state of the system has in the earlier model is, is, is removed. We only care about what information is, need, is available with the agents and what the cost is and how the action affects cost and how the action affects the information of the other agent. So our, our way of looking at information structures now also has to change. The information earlier our information structure was we were talking of what subset of observations and actions were available to various agents. So today now we do not need to think in those sort of ways. Information structure for us is completely defined, information structure for us is completely defined using these functions through these functions eta i t. So the functions eta i t. So, the functions eta i t uh, where i uh, goes from 1 to n and t goes from 1 to t, these this collection of functions basically describes who knows what. At, at each at each time. Right. So, this these functions describe the the uh, who, who which agent knows what information at at at, uh, at each instant in time. Right. So, therefore, these these functions can together be so, uh, thought of as our description of the information structure. So, these functions are description of our these functions define this defines the information structure of a problem. So, thanks to this we can actually uh, uh, we can in fact talk of uh, information structures in uh, by just looking at uh, the description of these functions. So, so what are they uh, an argument of, what, what, what values do they take and so on. The, uh, the we, let me also introduce one small piece of notation here. Uh, this particular this, this expected cost that has been written out here we can uh, this has to be of course computed uh, once you plug in the ui as a function of their information so 
once one does that we get the following which is gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma n, comma psi. Now, notice that so I have introduced gamma i here, gamma i here comprises of these t functions, gamma i t where t goes from 1 to t and each of those gamma i t's are themselves functions of y i t right. So, this is gamma i t takes value uh, takes as argument y i t. Now, when I write gamma uh, gamma 1 here with a bracket uh, like this, it does not really mean that uh, the same argument is being supplied to all, all the all these t functions. They would each have their own respective arguments and that has to be plugged in and that I am just assuming that that is understood here. But the point uh, the main point of introducing this notation is that this now tells gives us a notation for the cost as a function of the policy of each player of each agent. So, this is gamma 1 now is play agent 1's policy, gamma n is agent n's policy. So, in terms of that we can write out the cost and therefore, the problem for us is to find these functions gamma 1 to gamma n such that we minimize j of gamma 1 to this cost j of gamma 1 to gamma n. This R is our stochastic control problem intrinsic model, intrinsic form of the stochastic control problem. So, in the next lecture what we will see is how this, this particular intrinsic formulation actually helps us uh, uh, understand information structures in a much uh, in a much cleaner way. So, that is coming up in the next lecture.